All right, everyone. It is me once again, Jensen Chan. I hope everyone is doing quite well on a well. I was gonna say Friday, but it's really Thursday. Uh, but with that being said, well, I guess I don't need to open that wet tab anymore. So I've decided that maybe I want to try something a little different, all right? Because normally I like to talk about the market stuff before going into a crypto project, but now I'm actually gonna split that up. So that way, you know assholes who don't want to hear about i mean it's going to be a problem because i do want to attract like a more you know critical thinker type of youtube viewer <clears throat> but on the other hand it is also convenient to have just you know a certain topic that you want to stay on and then just watch a sh technically a shorter video or i guess quote unquote so uh i mean I'm, i don't think i'll be doing these every day but, I mean, I will if I notice that this type of video gets, like, you know, thousands of views or something. Something abnormally large. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to talk about, you know, the broad markets in general. All right. And then that way, in when I do the uh, crypto project uh, videos afterwards, I could just say, hey, go check out the uh, markets uh, over... Uh, I still have to come up with a nice little term because Greg uses markets to look ahead. You know, I got to think of like an overview thing. So, yeah. But anyway, I've been shorting Bitcoin on uh, Baby Swap. Uh, you'll notice I didn't actually do a video on that. And the reason why is because very high risk, uh, very high chance of losing money. And as I'm now finding out, your reward isn't really that great, right, given the amount of risk. So that's why I kind of don't want to be encouraging people to do that. Now, I know Dow King mentioned, uh, I mean, did a video on that, and I shilled his tweet, just in case you really want to go look, or actually just go to Dow King's uh, thingy majig, uh, YouTube, and find the baby swap. That's the name of the site, right? Baby swap? Perp.babyswap.finance. Yeah, that's the site. So I've been glued to like the markets and the cryptocurrency and especially Bitcoin prices like pretty much every like all the time, you know, so. Uh, so it's kind of annoying. All right. I've been. Uh, oh, by the way, and thanks to I think his name is Crypto Whale. Thanks to uh, Crypto Whale. Yeah, Crypto Whale for following me back. I mean, I don't think he watches my channel, but, you know, I've been following more. Are you serious? Are Fucking with my followers again. I can't wait for Elon Musk to buy this. Uh... Hmm. What's actually supposed to be here? Oh, it's probably like the ad or something. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I've been following more bear market uh, type of uh, uh, Twitters. So, you know, we're going to see, uh, you know, because obviously I need to have, you know, points of view from everyone, right? But I kind of know the overall market direction, and it's actually still bearish, I think. So, because again, I already did the video, it's on the playlist about how to protect yourself from a stock market crash, right? We're already in it, we have, we have a triple top mountain, right? And the highs are getting lower, and the lows are getting lower. Yeah. So it, it actually looks worse than 2008, because at least in 2008, I think we had a double top, right? Well, maybe we did have a triple top, but it was definitely double, and then it just went, boom, right? It just went straight crashing down. So, I mean, at that point, I consider that like the double top, right? There was a relief rally on the way down, right? But, I mean, at that point, it was, like everyone was just losing everything, right? And the liquidity markets seized up. So I've been tracking uh, crypto prices yet again. The Federal Reserve appears to be manipulating the markets yet again. This is actually really kind of pissing me off because this is just so effing dishonest. It really is. Like, no one is buying this. No one's buying this crap. All right. For whatever reason, the Fed is desperate to keep the stock markets going. But I think the smart money knows, like, it's all bullshit. Like, that's why everything's not going up right now. Because under normal circumstances, if this you see something like this, all this money should be flowing in the stock markets, they should be flowing into cryptocurrencies, it should be flowing into stuff. But look, these things are bar barely moving. It barely moved yesterday. Hell, even gold and silver isn't really doing that well either. Right? When I did my video about how, again, it's, it's also on the playlist, how gold, so actually it's the same video about protecting yourself from a bear market. You really have to watch that video. It's this, oh my god, since I'm constantly referring to it. Uh, playlist. 
Um, okay. Oh, I actually have to add back Royal Pay when they fix their uh, stupid coin, because right now they found an exploit. Luckily, it didn't cause that much damage, so that's good. But until they fix it, you know, I'll be off my playlist. But I'll add it back on. It's shorting. How to protect yourself from a market crash. Yeah, it's this one. This one's pretty long, but that's because we had to do a lot of whatever, right? And unfortunately, a lot of people are going to lose their money because it only has 77 views. So, all right. Well, I mean, not everyone can get rich, I guess. So anyway, so basically my point is everything is going up with the stock markets and they're going down with the stock markets. They're not acting as a hedge. In fact, they're acting as an the opposite. They're correlated almost perfectly. So that's really bad. All right. So again, you know, I'm still stocking. Well, I haven't. I bought a little bit of SPXS yesterday, I think, or two days ago. Right when we had a little bit of a market uh, bump or whatever, right? But um, yeah, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. This is supposed to tell you that people are buying like cash. It's like a fear trade or something. But this is abnormally large, right? This is abnormally large, right? If we're having a massive fear trade like this is telling us, right? You do see the dollar was up. Oh, jeez, what is wrong? The problem is I'm not, I'm not logged in. Great, I gotta find the. Is it maybe dx dot y? No. Uh, dx equals f. No, I think it's this one. Dx hyphen y. This should be it. Yeah, this looks right. We should be seeing a massive amount of demand for cash. Right, it's up a little bit, and we should be seeing stocks crashing. Right, because that would imply that everything is being sold off and everyone's buying bonds. We obviously don't see that. So everything's just dishonest. Everything's just manipulated. This is going to cause some severe uh, hype. I keep calling the term hyperinflation because that's really what it is. I can't think of a. I can't think of any other term. And Greg, I just watched Greg Manuel's video. Yeah, if you look at the Fed balance sheet. It's going it's skyrocketing. Right. This was recent as of June 15th. So this is right before the Fed started manipulating the debt markets. So what do you think is going to happen next Thursday? Right. So that's June 30th. Right. When they published the last week to today's data. What do you think this number? What's going to happen here? It's probably going to go straight through through the moon. Right. In fact, if they're using a three month, I'm going to have to do six months because it will be really high. Right. It's possible that the Fed could lie, along with the rest of the governmental system that reports on inflation data. I don't know. It might be kind of hard to get everybody, because I actually watched some Federal Reserve videos about how they actually like function. Yeah, they have like 12 regional banks, and they're all tasked with telling their employees to collect data from everyone. So, I mean, you have to tell all of them to basically lie. I don't know. I mean, that's going to be pretty hard to do. And then, of course, you have to worry about the Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics. You got to get them to lie, too, on the CPI inflation numbers. It's a possibility. I mean, if they're willing to manipulate the debt, U.S. debt markets, right? Uh, I mean, <laughs> anything's possible, but yeah. So, so now that I'm doing this video, I've been trying to think. The Fed has to know what they're doing is hyperinflationary, but they keep doing it anyway. So what are they trying to do? So the only thing I can think of, because I just thought of this, I think what they're trying to do is get this bond yield so low so that when the inflation data comes out, because there's going to be two major events before FOMC. June 29th, that's when we get the GDP numbers for America, right, which is... June 29th GDP numbers. I have to admit, I do like this format, all right, where I just talk about the overall broad picture. Yeah. So this is the Bureau of, I don't even know what B, what does BA stand for? Bureau of Economic Analysis. So their next release date is June 29th. So that's literally in six days, so next uh, Wednesday, all right? I'm betting, and I'm pretty sure BlackRock and Vanguard and the Wall Street uh, smart money, the real smart money, they're probably betting this number is going to be pretty negative, right? Because we also just got a jobs report. Yeah, I mean, it's reduced by 2,000, which isn't that great. But continuing jobless claims are actually much higher, according to Greg Manorino. 
So it doesn't really take a genius to figure out that we're probably going to be negative. And then once that happens, that's it. The nar- the bullshit narrative, we're not in a recession. We're not in a recession. We're not in a recession. Okay, we're in a recession. All right. That should set everything off and everything goes down. All right. And I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen. So I think the Fed's anticipating that and they're trying to get this as low as possible so that when we do get the 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 implosion like we'll just go back to like you know 3.5 3.75 right and then we'll get the cpi inflation number july 13th that's going to cause another implosion i mean i don't know man we're gonna have some seriously crazy inflation i haven't felt it yet right now so i don't know what the lag time is going to be so i what I do know is worldwide inflation is already through the roof, right? Uh, Great Britain has their 40-year high, or I think it was Great Britain. I don't know. I just know it's somewhere in Europe. So China is doing okay. Russia is doing okay. I haven't heard anything about India. Nothing good or bad, so I assume they're probably okay. I haven't heard anything about the Middle East, so I assume they're okay. But the West? Yeah, the West is just completely, like, screwed. So, again, you could just tell. Look, everything's just, like, distorted. So, I mean, I guess we'll see if the markets can try to rally again because the Fed is desperate. The, the government is desperate. I assume the Democrats are desperate to keep the stock markets going. If the Republicans were in charge right now, quote unquote, uh, they'd be desperate too. So it's really not, it's really a bipartisan desperation kind of thing. Uh, okay, so, all right. And I'll make this in a little other note. For some reason, Bitti is uh, much more overpriced than the Toronto version. So I guess this is the real price of Bitti, which is $40.72. But I don't know. I'm not liking, you know, I've been hearing record. Oh, thank God. I don't know. I don't like shorting Bitcoin. So far, I'm not liking it. In fact, I would rather just buy Bitti in the future. And yeah, I'll have to pay like, you know, full taxes on that or whatever, but... But yeah, whatever it is, you know, if the markets go up a lot, we're supposed to have a supposed relief rally. Even uh, the guy, the guy I've been following recently, right, Capo, right, who has like 11 trillion spam bots, by the way. He actually even said we're supposed to see a relief rally. No, it was actually not hit. Well, he's showing that in his charts, but he's also showing. Uh, oh, it's Crypto Whale that said that. That's right. Uh, where is it? Bear trap. Oh, for some reason, Twitter is not letting me leave some likes on this on people's tweets. It's like starting to annoy me. Let me see. I probably just did he like remove the thing? Okay, bookshelf falling interest rates. Um, yeah, here it is. Yeah, it is true. We are super oversold. Right, so there might be a you know short term relief rally, especially because BitTicket just came out. So usually when a ETF comes out, the opposite eventually happens, like hard, right? Get all the suckers in, and then you know take the opposite position. In this case, BitT is shorting Bitcoin, so that means crypto and Bitcoin probably will try to go up, which it has been trying to do, right? But interestingly enough, Bitcoin can't seem to really just, you know, go go that far up, right? It just keeps getting pulled down. And we know the reason why. Because the smart money knows it's all bullshit. So right now it's a game of musical chairs. Who wants to be the left, last guy, last gal standing? But, you know, if, if, the, uh, if we get... Because yesterday was flat for the markets, even though it opened up strong. Today might be the same thing. But they're just going to fail, all right? Because we see... We see what's happening, all right? We see what's happening. Inflation is just going to be insane. It's just going to be insane, all right? And pretty soon, Elon Musk, I guess I'll leave a link to this. Elon Musk is going to buy out Twitter soon, so we're going to have free speech back, and you're not going to be able to pull off this bullshit anymore, right? You know, the lockdowns and mandates were only possible because of mass censorship, right? The situation in Eastern Europe, which I will not name or even hint at, that was only possible because of pure censorship. Right. And I can kind of tell that, you know, Mike Cernovich might be getting annoyed with me uh, for some reason. All right. I don't know why, but I don't know. But whatever it is, 
you know, he and everybody in the alt light's going to have, like, lots of problems, too. So I'm looking forward to... Because I have... Because I will say this. I kind of noticed that people on the so-called right, right, the ones that are still here, right, your Jack Posobiec, Mike Cernich's, Ben Shapiro's, I've kind of noticed they're not actually cheering on Elon Musk all that much, right? I kind of wonder why. So, you know, once we do get free speech back and I won't have to worry about getting banned on Twitter, you're going to see me go real effing in. And a little, you know, you know, we'll see. Because I'm really curious if we... Oh, great. I pulled my rug too far forward on this thing. Because I'm kind of curious. If there was no censorship, right, and I was allowed to really say what I needed to say and then tweet out about certain uh, hoaxes, where if you tweet about those hoaxes now, you'll get banned on Twitter instantly, which is why I don't talk about it. You know, I want to find out what my real influence is. Because people from Brazil, thank you, by the way, uh, are really nice. They're, like, very supportive of what I do. All right. In fact, sometimes I get more engagement from Brazil than I do here in America, and, I, and I'm an American. Like, how does that make sense? <sighs> so, you know, we'll see. All right, anyway, I don't want this thing to get too long, but even though I kind of like long videos, let me think. All right, so anyway, everything's basically correlated, I mean, including crypto. So I'm not going to change my positions, right? I'm going to be adding to my short positions carefully. Right. As for and then for now for my baby swap position on shorting Bitcoin, I'm just gonna add a little bit of money, ten bucks, fifteen bucks, twenty bucks, just to increase my liquidation price. All right, because this, because we, because there is, because there is a very real possibility of a relief rally, bef like basically a major debt cat bounce. That's how I look at it, before we crash further. But the problem is we don't really have any real news. All right. Today is Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday, and I always know on weekends, cryptocurrencies tend to go down because it's the weekend. Nobody wants to hold risk over the weekend. So I think the next major event really is going to be June 29th. This GDP report is going to like really tell a big story because right now the narrative is we're not in a recession. It's coming later. We're not in a recession. It's coming later. And then once this thing actually reports negative, which I think it is, and Wall Street apparently thinks the same thing because they've been because they've been increasing their short positions, right? I, I I'm trying to see on Twitter, right? Zero Hedge or Crypto Well, no, or someone else. I'm pretty sure it was Zero Hedge said that they're shorting, or maybe it was Chuck Barone, right? Greg's new uh, pal, who's actually really good. They're not. Yeah, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. I'm short. They're sh they're shorting. So, yeah, I'm gonna remain short. But yeah, negative GDP report June 29th, and I'm thinking that's what the Fed is afraid of. So they're getting ahead of the curve, quote unquote, because, you know, so that, like, they're trying to get this as low as they can before the big bombs drop, all right? But of course, we're going to get the CPI inflation report. That'll be a good time to start building up more short positions before that comes out July 13th, so, Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I mean, in the short, at least in the very next couple of days, you know, crypto will at least do, you know, a, a kind of okay, right? Because they are desperate to hold everything up, whoever the bulls are. And hey, I'm happy. BNB miner is going to be making me a lot of money. Like the BNB miner, I mean, their, their contract just keeps going up. So yeah, it's going to replace all my income basically, which is great. You know, I'm not exactly thrilled about that, but I mean, that's just the way things are. Okay, so I haven't checked cryptocurrency projects for my YouTube sources in a long time, like I think a week maybe, or I don't know, when was the last time I did a video on something like that? So anyway, I'll check uh, check my YouTube after I upload this video, and then, I don't know, we'll just see what, I mean, to be honest, I feel like just doing two or three crypto projects, and then I'll just call it a day, so... If you like what uh, if you like what you read, saw, or heard, because that's the old outro. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, share this video around. Thank you again to all the uh, old and new people watching this channel. I rely on all of you to spread the word so that you know we can keep growing this uh, you know cozy little community. Because know, shit's about <laughs> shit's about to go down pretty bad. So I don't know. I still haven't come up with a with a vision of how all of us should live, you know, just like in the storytelling days. I don't know, because I'm not, 
I mean, obviously, I don't like the shit libs and the left, but I'm not exactly too thrilled about what we're doing uh, as right-wing people, at least here in America. So, I don't know. There's just too much manipulation and distortions politically, right? Which is why there's censorship on Twitter and, of course, economically. So, I don't know. I'm just, uh... <sighs> I've been getting so many spam calls lately. So... I don't know. I mean, we'll just take it one day at a time, like Jesse Lee Peterson teaches, right? I, mean, I haven't mentioned uh, him in a while, but yeah. All right, I'll see you uh, next video, whatever the crypto project is. If there's actually one, there might actually not be one, but I'm pretty sure there will be. I've waited like a week and a half before to, yeah. Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Think about what I said and maybe rewatch this video as well, because right now, you know, I don't like that... You know, right-wing influencers especially are telling people, oh, just buy, just buy, and then just go into real estate. It's like, you're so effing irresponsible, and that's kind of the reason why I'm getting kind of mad about it, but, you know, whatever. Everyone's just going to lose their money. Uh, and at that point, Elon Musk would already have established his hold on uh, Twitter. He'll probably fire a bunch of shit libs, and then, you know, I can go really ham and start maybe calling out more aggressively, you know, certain things. All right.